Hi, Clay Daniel with Claiborne Test Prep and Tutoring. We're recommended by uh, the team at CLT as a tutoring provider to help you succeed on the CLT. And we want to offer you a number of resources as well. And this problem is one of those. It is a challenging problem. It would probably be in the last five to 10 questions on the CLT, mostly because like many challenging problems, it brings together multiple concepts. There are a couple of different formulas and ideas that underlie it, and you really have to have a grasp on all of those for the entire problem to make sense. So like any composite problem, we need to kind of carefully take it apart and see what we're dealing with. The first important element, well, let me read it. A line is tangent to the circle x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 25 at the point negative 1 comma 1. And what is the slope of that line? So you might write down on your scratch paper the word tangent. That's our first clue. We then have the circle equation that's going to reveal some things to us. We'll come back and look at that. We have the tangent point, and we're asked about the slope. So let's start with the word tangent. It's a tricky word in math because it's used in a couple of different ways. This is not tangent in the sense of sine, cosine, and tangent, but rather tangent in the sense of touching at exactly one point. And a line can be tangent to a circle at exactly one point. Not more than one point, but it can touch kind of any place around the edge of a circle. However, before we draw that line, we need to figure out where the point is, negative one, one, on the circle. And in order to do that, we need to start with this circle equation, which in its pure form is x minus h squared, plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h, k is the center, coordinates of the center of the circle, and r is the radius. Right, that's not a very good h. I'll try to fix that a little bit more. Notice that in the parent formula, x minus h, y minus k, there are subtraction symbols in the formula itself, which means subtraction is already taken into account. x minus h, x minus 2. That actually means this 2 is a positive value. x minus h, x plus 3. That means that 3 is a negative value, and we can assess the center of the circle as being at the point 2, negative 3. We're going to leave the radius for now. Um, we'll, come, we'll come back to that. But now let's think about that tangent line. Now that we know where the center of the circle is, we can think more about this point, negative 1, comma 1, and assess where exactly does that point lie on the circle given the coordinate grid. You can imagine that up here sort of to the upper left, is going to be the origin, 0, 0, because we would go 2 to the right and 3 down to get to the point 2, negative 3. So it follows that the point negative 1 should be 3 units to the left of 2, and the, and the point positive 1 should be 4 units up from negative 3. So the tan point of tangency, let's just make a point about right there, so that we can draw a line that will make sense to be tangent at precisely that spot. I don't think I nailed it exactly, but now that I've drawn the line, my artwork always fails me in cases like this. Um, we can say that that's negative one, one right there. All right, now we're getting close. We want to think about the radius. And here's why. If we think about the Point, the line, the tangent line, and what its slope might be, we need to keep one thing in mind, a geometry property that says, this, it, that says a line tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius it intersects. That is, if we draw a line 
right out from the center of the circle to the point where it would intersect, we know there is perpendicularity there, meaning we have just created right angles here and here. Why is that significant? It has to do with slope. You may recall that perpendicular slope means we want the negative reciprocal. We want to both negate a slope and flip it, flip the fraction, bottom over the top, numerator over denominator. Okay, so we're almost there, but we still don't know what the slope of this kind of yellowish line is in order to find its negative reciprocal for our tangent line. For that, we're going to use the old rise over run formula. You may recall, slope is often referred to as m, and that's going to be one y coordinate minus the other. One minus a minus three is one plus three over the x coordinate subtracted, negative one minus two, and that comes out as negative four thirds. That is the slope of this line right there. Now we're almost there. As we take the negative reciprocal of four thirds, we will get to negating it, we'll turn it positive, flipping it as the reciprocal, we'll flip it over, and we will get to our answer of three-fourths. So a quick word about how you study when you encounter a question like this. You want to break it up into parts and think what are all the underlying formulas and ideas and skills that I need. You might go through and say, do I know the circle equation? Check. Or if not, I'll make a flashcard for it. Did I know that a line tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius it intersects? That relationship. On a more basic level, you want to make sure you know how to do rise over run, change in y over change in x, and the fact that a perpendicular slope is a negative reciprocal. Finally, let's erase that part. Finally, even the definition of the word tangent and how to visualize a line touching a circle at exactly one place. All right, so a, a difficult CLT problem is often a composite of many ideas. That's what makes it difficult. Not that the ideas themselves are so challenging to understand once you know them, but that you must know each of these five or six underlying skills and concepts in order to solve the problem. So consider that as you approach challenging CLT problems and use those challenging problems to help you study even for the more basic ones by breaking down the concepts that are involved.